If you're somebody looking to get a CNC or you're somebody that just got a CNC and you have absolutely no idea where to start or how to start, then this video is for you. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason with Fence Woodworking. And if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. Back in February, I was fortunate enough to take ownership of my good friend Jay Bates' Axiom AR8 Pro. I wanna make something very clear to start this video off. I am in no way, shape or form a subject matter expert on anything related to the CNC. I want that to be extremely clear because what I'm trying to accomplish through what will become a video series is taking you all along the process as I learn. The topics that I'm gonna cover in the video today are so basic that they were just brushed over in every single thing that I've tried to find online. And in a lot of cases, I couldn't find it all. And then one day I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do something really, really simple like engraving a word, some letters. And now that I've done that and I'm able to answer those questions, again, extremely basic things, but if you're thinking about getting a CNC, or you just got one and you haven't even touched it yet, or you have one and you haven't been able to wrap your brain around exactly what you need to do to get it to cut the first thing, then this video is gonna be really, really helpful and it's gonna give you that motivation to want to continue to do more things. So what were some of the things that I was struggling with in the beginning? Well, one, it was just figuring out how to make anything in V-Carve. Something else I had a very difficult time figuring out. Where do I place the piece that I'm working on on the table. How do I know that? So we're gonna cover a little bit of that today. How do I set my bit after I change a bit out? You know, when you see the little bit drop down and touch the puck, I had absolutely no idea how to do that. I didn't know what button did that. I didn't know what the steps were to do that. I was trying to figure out how the dang pendant that you see hanging up on the wall behind me, how that, how that works. Like, what is it for? How do I get a file from my computer over to the pendant and then what do I do on the pendant to actually start the cut, right? So again, all of these things are a requirement in order for you to make your first cut. But by finally doing that first simple, simple CNC cut, I feel like I learned so much and it was so enjoyable. And now I'm really, really motivated to learn more and share all that with you guys. Okay, so I'm about to primarily show you things uh, up until we begin the cut actually using a screen recording on the computer so I can walk you through the steps. But before we get into that, I do wanna show you a few of the different things that I'm gonna be using. The piece that we're using, this is just a scrap cut off piece of black melamine. It's 254 millimeters by 254 millimeters. It's a perfect square. This is a quarter inch uh, V-bit, engraving V-bit that I will be using. It'll give us nice fine detail. But this is from Bits and Bits Company and the number is 425CR45. And when I got my CNC, Bits and Bits was nice enough to send over a set of really the necessities that you need for a CNC machine, which has been great because as I've been learning, I've been trying out the different bits to see what bits do what. But this was the first bit that cut anything on the CNC machine, and that is what we will be using today. Uh, you're gonna see me referencing one of these. This is just a little USB card stick. Obviously we have my computer here with the V-Carve Pro and then we have up here the pendant which is what operates the CNC machine and I'll walk you through the steps for all of that here shortly. All right so I use V-Carve um, just because that what was, is what's recommended to me when I got the CNC machine and that's what I'm using. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. And again, the whole purpose of this video is not to get into the weeds about everything, right? I wanna show you exactly what you need to do just to make your first cut. So we're gonna create a new file, okay? Then you're gonna have all of this stuff over here. You're gonna see all kinds of other uh, options that you have. And I think this right here is what makes it the most confusing is because there are so many different options. And if you're not familiar with it, like I'm not, it can be very overwhelming. But the more I start messing with the programs, the more I find it's not as important to worry about everything because half the stuff or more doesn't even apply to the job that you're doing at the time, right? So to start it off, single-sided job already has it set up for you. This actually already has the sizes pre-programmed in. So it's 254 by 254, which you see right here. It's just a perfect square. And the material thickness is 19 millimeters and you have the option in this program if you wanted to use uh, Imperial or Metric, and you can do that right here. Zero position is referencing the face of the board. We're gonna start down in the bottom corner. This stuff right here, it's already set, don't worry about it. 
and we're just gonna hit OK. Okay, so this right here is my piece. Okay, and we wanna add some text to it. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna double click text and it's gonna open up this box. Okay, you have all kinds of different things you can do. You can change the font, all that stuff. We're not doing any of that, right? We just wanna cut something. So I'm gonna use start here. That's kind of the theme for this uh, cut today. You know, just this is where you need to start, right? And this is how I started. And it was really, really motivating for me. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make it uh, nice and large, or at least a pretty decent size, all right? We're gonna make sure that it's centered. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but you have those crosshairs that come up. So I can center this. And, okay, so I've got my text that I want to cut out. It says, start here, right? This is how we're gonna begin. So what do we do now that we have the letters? Well, we wanna tell this software what we want the machine to do. So we're gonna come over here to tool paths and we're gonna to go to, there's lots of different options, okay? Video is for this one, which is a quick engraving tool path. I'm going to click on that. I'm gonna go up here. It already has my bit uh, selected, which is fine, but this is where you would go to determine which bit you need. We're using a 45 degree quarter inch V bit from bits and bits, okay. The depth that we would like to go, we're gonna go ahead and keep that at one millimeter. We are going to run this on the outline of these lines right here. And we are going to, oh, well this is good because now I can show you. Post-processor, right? What type of file you need to create for your CNC machine, right? So there's, there's a lot, okay? completely gonna be dependent on the CNC machine that you have, right? But we wanna make this file right here, Axiom HHC CNC. That's the kind of file that is going to be created. And it's great that now that I did that, it's gonna go and keep that there, okay? Now that we've done that, we're gonna hit calculate. And as you noticed, these little lines came up and those lines are indicating what the cutter is going to do, okay? So how can we see this if we want to? Let's go ahead and close. Let's go here to preview tool paths. And this feature is pretty cool because now you can look at it with some sort of wood backdrop and you can select that. But this right here is the path that the CNC is going to take as it picks up from one and goes to the other, right? Now we go back to tool paths. We're gonna go ahead and hit play and it's gonna show you exactly what it's gonna do. And that's it, right? And so now we like this, okay? So I wanna close this out and I wanna save this. So I'm gonna to go to save tool path. And the thing that you're gonna to save the tool path to is that little drive, thumb drive that I showed you or something similar, just some sort of drive and it's gonna open up. Here's my USB, it's my little USB stick. Okay, go ahead and close that out. Go up to tool paths. I'm gonna click on this. This is the quick engrave two. This is what I wanna save. And we are going to save this tool path. Make sure it's selected. Save the tool path. Up here, we're gonna make sure that it's going to that drive. And so there's no confusion. Let's call this, um, Let's call, let's just title this YT for YouTube, right? So this is the YouTube part one, YouTube one. I'm gonna save that. And now this right here is saved to that disc and now all we have to do is get the CNC ready for the cut. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is clamping it down. And I wanna bring up a couple of things, right? So you can see here, these have been cut previously, but I've even had the privilege already of learning why you don't want to have your clamps in the way, right? So I ran into it with a bit and that's fine. They're aluminum, cuts right through it uh, and the machine will stop in the event that it absolutely has to. But there's lots of different clamping options that you can use. And so before we clamp it, we want to figure out where we're going to use as a reference for the machine, right? 
And this gets a little bit more into the weeds, but if you can see here, this is a pre-programmed location number six, number two, number four. Um, I think number one is up here. So this is something that Jay did, right? So you can go in the pendant and uh, pick which one you want to start it from. And I pretty much start everything from here. Um, it's already programmed into the pendant uh, and how you go about doing that will be for another video. But once you have your location for you go, that is your reference spot for where you're going to start or place your board because everything is going to be referenced off of this corner. So hopefully that makes sense. A couple different options you can do to clamp it down. You can use these uh, tightening clamps here. I'll just put one down here in the corner and this is where you want to make sure looking at this, my, my letters are going to be cut right in here. So I should have no problem. Then you can go ahead and use uh, clamps like these that you see here. I can push it up against my workpiece and I can just press this down and it applies pressure forward this way. And then, you know, if I wanted to use this clamp up here in this corner to hold it, um, I can do so. I just place it on there just like that. Put it up there in the corner, tighten it down, and it's good to go. So I've got my piece on the CNC machine in the reference point that I want. It's clamped down. Everything is good to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and insert my router bit. And as I'm sure that you can imagine, placing this router bit into the CNC is just like uh, placing any other router bit that you'd put in any uh, collet or router system, right? So we're just going to go ahead and tighten that down. There we go. Router bit's nice and tight. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and turn on the machine. So you might hear it in the background a little bit, but as the machine's coming on, it's going to come up with this screen. And so the first thing that you're going to do when you turn it on is all access home. And you'll see right here, origin, okay. That's your command, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and let it move. And as you can see, it's coming all the way back down to the home position. All right, so it's at the home position. So what do we do next? Well, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna set the tool right? Because we just put in a new bit. We want to make sure that we set it so the machine knows where the tip of that bit is. And this was a huge struggle for me for some reason. And then after I figured it out, I uh, saw how easy it was. And I really want to share that with you guys because it drove me nuts, right? So we're going to go ahead and move the machine. You guys can see it there on the left-hand side. And we want to push it back some. And now it's there. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, you just moved it after you home the machine. It doesn't matter, right? It's still gonna reference off of this right here that you see, this is the six uh, pre-position location, right? So no matter what, it's always gonna start from that corner unless I change this. And again, that's not for this video. So now let's go ahead and do the tool set. Okay, so the mistake that I made the first time that I did this is I was using the Z to move up and down. And I thought that if I moved the Z down to touch it, it would basically hit this and automatically go back. I didn't know there was a tool set, right? A lot of people may feel the same way. And then I quickly realized that that is not how you do it. <laughs> so I've gone and shown you this just so you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So uh, this is gonna go down, this is gonna go up, Z plus, Z minus. I'm gonna use this to get really close to that little puck. Once I'm close to the puck, then I will hit the tool set and you'll get to see the whole process now. All right, so I'm going, hitting the Z, moving down. This is where I can see if I need to adjust it. I'll bring you guys in closer so you can see. So if I hold down the Z, it's gonna to continue to go until I let go. If I just pu uh, push it, it just drops it down ever so slightly. And so typically I'm gonna get as close as possible. And this is when I'm gonna hit the button that says tool set. And now it will drop down. As soon as it touches that puck, it will then release back up. And now my bit is set. All right, so now what do we have left to do? 
the thing we have left to do is tell the machine what we want it to do, right? So I'm gonna place my USB stick in the machine and give it a second to load up. I'm gonna go down here to run and pause. I'm gonna click that. It's gonna scan and then it says select work file. What we're working with is the U disk. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then that's gonna bring up everything that's on that disk. And remember we are looking for the YT1, okay? So this is the one that we're looking for. We're gonna hit okay. Now, the next time I hit OK, it's gonna start the machine. So real quick, I'm gonna grab my dust collection remote. We're gonna turn on the dust collection. I'm not actually gonna put on the shroud just so you guys can see the cut more clearly, but we're gonna go ahead and make this first cut. The very first cut on a CNC for me started with just cutting out some simple letters. This is a really good place to start. For me, it gave me the excitement to try to figure out how to do other techniques, like instead of an outline, how I'm gonna cut these letters as maybe a pocket or something like that. But it's, it's not as difficult to get started as I made it out to be, or you might be making it out to be. And I hope that those steps showing you how to do something simple like this proves that. All right, everybody, so that is as easy it is to just make your first cut, right? And I would challenge any of you, if you feel intimidated by it, there's lots of really good resources out there. Mark Lindsay CNC is who I've found to be the most helpful so far. He has a ton of really informative videos on how to basically do everything. And I'm talking like anything you could think of in Vectric or VCarve, he has a video on it. And so for me personally, so far going through this process, I've been referencing his videos primarily. But I promise you that once you do something simple like this, just if, if you feel intimidated, follow the steps that I showed you in the video, take a lot of the confusion or the feelings of being overwhelmed, just take it out of the equation, right? Just don't feel like you need to get a CNC machine and start by cutting 3D models right? It, it, it's just, it, you don't need to do that, right? You just need to see what the machine is capable of and then test it. That's going to do it for me in this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys want to find out more information about me or any of the companies that help support what I do, go ahead and check out the links in the video description. Also make sure that you go over and check out my website, benswoodworking.com. If you guys have any questions or comments or suggestions for later videos, please leave them down in the comment section below. And if you're not following me on Instagram, head over there at Ben's Woodworking. Give me a follow, send me messages. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. So until next time, everybody, get out in the shop, try something new, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.